hey my name is Stormy Atlantis welcome back to my channel uh, so today I'm going to make a video that I've been too afraid to make um, because I've been too afraid to make it and um, planning to share it on my personal social media which I don't generally share the videos I make <laughs> onto my personal social media but I'm going to do it because I'm afraid to do it and that's the point of the whole video. We're going to talk about fear and the perversion of fear into virtue, which is what I primarily see occurring uh, in the world today. So when it comes to the topic of the Rona, the thing about it is what concerns me about what I see when I look around the world right now is that fear itself is being touted as virtuous. I believe in that thoughts create a reality. I believe that we as a collection, like as a collective, are co-creating our collective reality, right? So it's really important that every single person is mindful of the truths which they agree upon, okay? So a truth is only the things that we agree upon. There is no real objective truth <laughs> because reality is being created with our thoughts. So we can decide on a truth. In the same way that I could make a video one way or the other on this debate, and you would agree with me based on whichever truth aligns with your truth. It doesn't really matter what you think. You can find the evidence you need to support your theory online. If I wanted to make a video right now to prove that this is all a conspiracy and a hoax, I could do that. I could find enough um, evidence to support that. If I wanted to make a video right now to prove that this pandemic is very real, it's a very real threat, we should all be very concerned about it, I could find enough evidence to do that. It's intentional that I can do that. That's the way I see this. Divide and conquer is the oldest trick in the book, okay? As long as the people are fighting amongst themselves, we don't have time to question anything else or to contemplate the really important information. The thing about, and the thing that concerns me with the fear being virtue and co-creating reality is that love is the highest consciousness that a person can hold. Pure, unadulterated love um, is the highest frequency, the highest level of consciousness, the purest thing we could hold on to. Um, it's my understanding that the exact opposite of that, it's my experience, I guess you could say, that the exact opposite of love is fear. I think it's common to assume that the opposite of love is hate, but I think hate is actually a derivative of fear. Fear is what I believe to be the lowest possible conscious frequency that we can hold. And I'm very concerned about the collective all holding fear, which as a side note that I'm not gonna go whole video on right now is definitely intentional. It's how you oppress people. That's why we always have something to fear. If it's not a war, or um, you know, a terrorist group, or a virus, or um, shooters, or you know, whatever the thing is. There's always something for us to fear. That's intentional because as long as we are fearful and living in fear and afraid, we cannot fully grow to be who we are, and we can't evolve properly. I saw an experiment once and it was, I don't remember the specifics, but I remember the gist, so I'll give you the gist. There's a, a waiting room or an audition room of some kind and you've got um, several actors and um, you, you put in a new person who's not a part of the experiment. And every time a bell, I think it's a bell or something like that goes off, they all just stand up out of their seats. They don't say anything <laughs> and they just sit back down. And uh, they just keep doing this when the bell rings. 
after a few rounds of this, the person who's not, who's the person being experimented on, starts to just also stand up when they stand up and sit back down when they sit back down. And they just start doing that as well. And they start to bring in more people and they all start doing it. Eventually they start to rotate out all the people who were originally a part of the experiment, who begun the standing and sitting. They remove all of them from the experiment until there's just a room left of people who have no idea why this is even happening and they're all still doing it. Bell goes off, they all stand, they all sit down. Nobody even questioned it. Nobody even asked, why are we standing? They just went along with the herd, which is a real problem in our society, right? Herd mentality is an issue. And it's because we all want to be accepted. We all want to be a part of the group. We all want love. We all want, you know, to, to be validated. And when you have people, and by people I mean most people, <laughs> walking around with masks on, virtue signaling each other that I'm a good person because I'm taking this seriously by being afraid, okay? That's what they're saying. I am a virtuous person because I am fearful of what I am told to be afraid of, okay? And if you are not fearful of this also, then you're not a good person. <laughs> Something along those lines, right? Like. I have, before they put the mandate in place where I had to wear a mask in a store, I didn't wear a mask. I have only put on masks when I'm told I legally have to. And then I do because I'm not gonna fight about it. Like, okay, I'll put my mask on, whatever. But uh, if I don't have to, I'm not going to. So when, before they mandated it in all stores when it was optional but encouraged, I didn't do it. And I got a lot, a lot of shitty looks from people who were shaming me with their body language, right? I was being shamed for not being afraid. And it doesn't really matter if you think that I should be afraid or not. What's important here is that we are now considering fear to be virtuous and shaming those who are not holding fear. As a collective, we have directly inverted the most important principle I can think of which is that we should at any and all times be striving closer to love. And now we are considering it to be optimal, to be afraid. And that is fucking crazy. Here's the thing, again, thoughts create reality. If everybody is terrified of a virus, you are concentrating on something, everyone. This is like, this is like a coven of witches, but like a million witches all doing a spell together. That's what this is essentially like. In a metaphysical sense, this is a whole lot of people all manifesting the same reality. Everybody is concentrated on something that they are fearful of, which only brings it closer to your reality. And aside from that, fear is the worst thing that you could be doing for your body in terms of encountering a virus. Stress and fear is the fastest way to get sick without a fucking virus. And now we're all just running around being afraid, not getting fresh air, <laughs> not getting sunlight, not hugging each other, not receiving the kind of basic human necessities that are optimal for us to function in the face of a virus. Everything is literally fucking backwards, okay? doesn't matter if it's a conspiracy or not. In either scenario, the answer to the problem is to step out of fear. And the whole reason that I'm making this video is because it occurred to me <laughs> as I was contemplating how, the, how much fear has been injected into our collective consciousness. And I was thinking about how I managed to escape it. And then I realized I fucking didn't <laughs> at all because I have been terrified to even speak on the subject for the exact same reason. Because I didn't want to be outed. I didn't want to be seen as crazy or as a woo-woo like nut job, you know? I didn't want to be persecuted for my observations and for my view of reality. So I have been fearfully quiet. And then I realized what a fucking hypocrite I am 
because I have been wanting so badly for everyone to snap out of fear while I myself have been sitting in it without realizing it this whole time. And not only am I afraid to publicize these thoughts and opinions, I am extra super terrified to publicize these opinions to people in my actual personal social circle. Like I started to consider like, okay, I could make a video, I could put it on YouTube and I just, I put it out there. But then am I really facing my fear? Because really what I'm terrified of is the people that actually know me, the people that are my friends, the people who, who are wearing their masks and taking this very fucking seriously, who I don't say anything to about this. Who I don't tell them that what I think, like I don't say anything. I put a mask on, I go, hey, how's it going? Whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't argue with them. I don't want them to see it. So I'm making the video because I have to practice what I preach. <laughs> I can't make a video saying, hey, you guys, stop being fearful. If I myself am still fearful, you should always be the change you want to see in the world. It's my favorite quote. It's been my cover photo on Facebook for since I think 2011 or something <laughs> for so long. It's in my cover photo because it's my favorite quote. And I, I believe in that statement. I believe that the only way to create any change is to start with you and to be the example and to hold that and own that. So this is me owning that. This is me saying, hey guys, like, can we all stop pissing on each other about whether or not this is bullshit? Because it, I mean, ugh, that's a whole other thing. You have to at some point become aware that every news source you're consuming, and I do mean like virtually every news source you're consuming is there to manipulate you, even if it's the truth, even if it's a conspiracy, because to become fearful of a conspiracy is still being fearful. You're still letting them win. <laughs> This is a war of consciousness. This is a, a war of a metaphysical nature. That's what we're really fighting here. This is not about masks. This is not about anything that everyone thinks it's about. This is a war of minds, of consciousness, of sovereignty. The only way for us to win the game that's being played is to not play it. The only way to conquer fear is with love. The only way to win this fight is to not fight. <laughs> Even if what you want to do is start like a protest about it and spread the word and hey guys, like this is a conspiracy. They're trying to take your children, they're trying to do whatever, whatever. Listen, that's fine and well, but as long as you are pushing fear, you're helping them. But you have to understand, and this is where I sound the craziest, <laughs> the people in charge are people who have been hoarding esoteric knowledge for a millennia. Okay? That's the real conspiracy. It's not about... Ah, uh, it's not about any of the things. This is, I know most conspiracies, okay? And I don't even disagree with a lot of them. But the thing that you have to be aware of is it's not that they're, you know, just Satanists or that they're, you know, power hungry or that they're the elite and they're hoarding the money. It's these people have been hoarding the knowledge since they burned down the Library of Alexandria, okay? There is another layer to reality and it's not physical and it's about our consciousness. It's about our will. Okay, that's what we're really fighting for. It's about your ability to have sovereignty over your own mind. And as long as you're allowing yourself to be manipulated in your heart and your feelings and your emotions, you're losing, okay? And they're winning. And it's not a fight we should lose. <laughs>